Welcome to Monday Jazz and Conversation, presented by a collaboration of four nonprofit organizations Gold Coast Jazz Society, South Florida Jazz, Sunshine Jazz Organization, and the Miami Jazz Cooperative, all of whom are dedicated to bringing jazz to South Florida audiences. Each Monday, Wendy Peterson and Nick Yorta feature the music and talk to the country's most talented and interesting jazz musicians. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Fedchok to the uh, hang. Hi, Hi everybody. John. Great to be here. Um, the amazing and beautiful and the world's best person, Brenda <laughs> Alford. <laughs> Ooh, hi, Brenda. Live up to that. <laughs> okay, I got some seven to do. <laughs> please welcome to Jazz and Conversation, the amazing Joe Donato. Joey D! Hello. How are you? I'm so Good evening, sad ladies and gentlemen. This is Rob Bedwards. And tonight, tonight, <laughs> it's Joe Donato. This is your life. And now, the hosts of Monday Jazz and Conversation, Wendy Peterson and Nick Yorda. Hello, Hello everyone. <laughs> How's it going? Happy Monday. Hey, I think that might have been my most natural hello of the entire tenure. Maybe. Just now that you're getting it good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that later. Uh, welcome to, to uh, tonight's show. We've got, a, we've got a beautiful live trio for you tonight. Um, our guest tonight is the fantastic Tom McCormick. Would you want to put up his picture? I think I will do that. Well, then do it. I'm doing it. Okay. Here it comes. Look at this. Look at this. Ready? There he is. Oh, there he is. Um, just a, a really fantastic sax player, uh, songwriter. He's got CDs out. Uh, he's pretty much one of uh, our favorite, South Florida's favorites. Absolutely. Uh, tasteful sax player guy. Um, so we're gonna we're going to hear from him. He's got, he brought a great um, bunch of guys tonight. We've got Gertz Kujak on the drums, and we have Derek Fairholm. I'm, all, I'm always super scared that I'm going to say Darren instead of Derek and Fair Homes. <laughs> is there an S at the end or is there not an S? What is, it's just Fair Home. Fair Home. home. It's, it's been butchered before. You I know. <laughs> That's why I'm trying I'm trying my best not to. I already butchered Gertz. But she cares. I, I'm sure I already butchers, butchered Gertz's name. I don't know. Good. <laughs> Gertz. Um, but um, so it's fantastic. We've got, um, yeah, a little, little organ trio. So. Before that, I want, would like to just say one thing because um, I always forget and I don't want to do that. Uh, please support our musicians. Uh, this is a normal gig for them, it's like a Monday night gig. So we want to make sure that they get paid fairly and decently. And um, so is that what it's going to be like? Okay. So um, we ask that you um, use our virtual tip jar to uh, send them a little love. Text the word tip jar to the number 44321. The first $100 is always matched. And um, that way we can make sure that they get, you know, get, you know, be able to live, I guess. Feel the love. Feel the love and feel the love. That's, that's also the same. Um, so once again, text the word tip jar. That will be in your message section. So to the number 44321. So the number you're, you're sending it to 44321 with the message tip jar. Sometimes that gets confusing. So that's all I have to say on that. And now let's commence. Is there anything you need to say? Uh, I don't think I do. I think the music will speak for itself. So please welcome Tom McCormick. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. That was something called Gingerbread Boy. Um, it was written by Jimmy Heath and it was recorded by Miles Davis. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on with something by Chick Corea. We want to honor uh, Chick Corea, who we lost uh, recently, a, a giant in the jazz world. I think he influenced all of us in this room here. <laughs> and this is something called 500 Miles High. It's off my favorite Chick Corea record, Light as a Feather. Thank you. 
you to go buy it. Sure. You wanna hit that thing? Yeah. Or actually, I'll bring you one. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Let's do docs. Let's do docs. Yeah, do it a bit. Can you hear any sounds like that? Just one, one, two, a one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Tom McCormick with Derek Fairholm and Gertz Kuyak on drums and uh, Derek on organ. So what a great trio. Yeah, sounds great, guys. Fantastic. Well, loving it. So, yeah, we're going to need you to speak into the mic even though you won't be hearing it, Tom. Okay. It's one of those things. So now he gets into the... It. Yeah, you guys can chill, grab a... Uh, Hop in the pool. There you exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, so now you're in the hot seat. It's the living room series. Make yourselves at home. Is this the hot seat? And or, we, or what was it in German? Oh, the, Wohnzimmer. Wohnzimmer. <laughs> the, the living room. That's not the hot seat. How do you say hot seat? Hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to uh, learn all about uh, Mr. McCormick and how he, his influences, how he grew up, where he grew up, all this stuff. So right off the bat, where are you from? Baltimore, Maryland. All right. And when did you end up here? Um, well, I went to work on, uh, I took a cruise ship gig in 1983. Okay. And then uh, I stayed a long time. I stayed five years. So I was sort of living here then. Okay. But I was sort of, sort of still living in Baltimore. Okay. It's like I would go back for vacations. But sometimes, sometime during that period, I, I always thought about living in Florida. Okay. I had grandparents here. Right. And, uh. You know, I eventually got off the ship and settled here. And settled. And yeah. so you started playing when? How old were you? Oh, gosh. Um, I was eight, and I was in fourth grade, and I was playing clarinet okay. in the beginning. Yeah. And then I switched the saxophone in sixth grade. Um, there's a little story behind that. I don't know if you have time for it. Oh, yeah. Tell us. <laughs> we want to know everything. It's your show. Oh, all right. It's my show. All right. Um so um, I was, my father took me to an a instrument repair shop, and we were getting the clarinet fixed, and it was the summer before sixth grade, and there was an older kid in there. He was probably all of like 14, you know, 
and he played saxophone and he was talking about playing in a band and back then you know they had soul bands that had horn sections and stuff and I thought wow if I could play saxophone, I mean, that, that would be really cool. I mean, clarinet wasn't cool anymore. Clarinet right. definitely wasn't cool, at least in my book. Now it is. There's some right. people doing great oh, yeah. stuff on clarinet. So anyway, right around the same time, the band director said, we're going to get a saxophone, and we're going to take one of you clarinet students, and we're going to switch you over to the tenor saxophone. Right. And all summer, I was hoping and praying that would be me, and sure enough, it was. So I actually played both clarinet and saxophone in sixth grade, carted both of them to the school. The tenor was almost as big as me. It went down all I, the way to my knee. I wish we had a picture of that. Oh, I wish we did, too. Yeah. Somewhere, I, I have to dig that up. Uh, but for the next show, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't find Facebook. it for this show. Just post it on Facebook. I, I, I suppose I could do yeah. that. Yeah. And so did you take to the, the, the saxophone right away? I mean, that was like, felt like something to you? It did. Felt like love? It did. It did. I just liked it. I just liked the sound of it and, 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 and everything. Yeah. Well, also maybe just the fact that it was big. It just felt, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so I guess, I guess, so when did you, when did you know that this was it for you? Like music? Oh gosh. Um, I felt that's what I, what I was, you know, good at I mean I didn't so all through high school you're you're playing uh yeah we we um we had a band like uh I think that band might have start I might have been in that band when I was 14 and that morphed into another band and it was a horn band okay. so at that time you know most bands were like playing Credence Clearwater and they mm. were like guitar oriented bands and we were the, the horn band in the neighborhood. The first gig was for a, a preteen center, and we worked for watermelon. Yeah, we didn't get paid. It was all, all the watermelon you could eat. Yeah. <laughs> kind of still feels the same way. <laughs> Sometimes. I was going to say, what's changed? Right. We don't even get watermelon. <laughs> yeah, so we played all through high school, and, and we did um, – CYO's Catholic Youth Organization dances and bar mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs and eventually we graduated into like nightclubs and we even joined the union when we were only like 16 years oh, old. Nice. Yeah, and, and I did all that through high school. Yeah. Um, and so the so we do have a picture. The first picture that you sent to uh, is and let's that might be the oldest picture I sent to you. Yeah. So ba that's the Baltimore um, band. That's um. That's a gig, I think it was at Frostburg State College, and it was the trumpet player John Lampkin's gig. My good friend uh, Tim Murphy on piano, uh, Mark Russell uh, on bass, I don't remember the guitar player's name, and the drummer was Dennis Chambers. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, Dennis was uh, a local cat. <laughs> right. right. I mean, I could call him up and hire him for a gig. What it, year would this have been? Oh, gosh. <sighs> Late 70s or maybe uh, 1980 or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Still had hair. Yeah, right. <laughs> and skinny, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very thin, skinny. <laughs> and you're playing, it looks like, so you're playing soprano there? Or yeah, I had a soprano yeah. already then. Do you yeah. play clarinet anymore at all? or? Uh, yeah, I was teaching it at uh, Miami Dade. Oh, okay. Yeah, it kind of fell into my lap when the, the real clarinet, I shouldn't say that, the other <laughs> clarinet teacher <laughs> left town and there was only a couple students and I really loved it. Yeah. Um, uh, and I started practicing it a lot because I didn't want to embarrass myself. And, uh, <laughs> and I do play it on gigs, but I, I don't really improvise on clarinet. Okay. Very, very rarely will I take a, they have to like really bribe me into taking a solo, like a Dixieland gig if it, you know, I, I could probably take a solo and hold out some high notes and fool some people. Right. You know, like when the saints go marching in or something now, like that. Now you, know? you sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and so how did you end up get, um, getting on the ship gigs? Oh, um, there was a local drummer uh, who was on uh, the ship called the Mardi Gras. Early, early carnival cruise lines, when the ships were, were pretty small. And um, he talked all about it, uh, you know, he, what an adventure it was going to Jamaica and these places and uh, it sounded like something I wanted to do for a minute but I ended up staying five years I told all my friends I'll be back in about two months yeah there's the ship band right there yeah. 
Yeah, so I was, by then I was, I was the show band leader. I started out in a quartet. You might have that picture too. The quartet was, um, I don't was really I do. great because it, we were playing jazz as much as we could and, and two of the guys were from Berkeley and had a really swinging drummer and um, at, at its best a ship gig could be like college. I mean, we hung right. out and checked out different music and we even like did originals and had our own repertoire. Hmm. Uh, we were supposed to be playing like dance music, like cha cha chas and uh, okay. foxtrots and all that. So we had this. There was this like running kind of gag that when the cho- cruise director walked in the room, we had to <laughs> launch into Satin Doll. No matter we uh, could we right. could be playing like um, some Freddie Hubbard tune out of the first Real Book. Sure. Right. And then we would immediately launch into Satin Doll. Real polite version. Da 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 da. You know, two beat. You know, the two nice. beat bass line. And then as right. soon as he would leave the room, we would take it out again pick up where you left off exactly here's another uh shot of you from your ship days oh yeah Mm mm-hmm looked like you were you might have been on the deck uh, you know getting some sun and all that uh yeah i did a fair amount of that (laughs) color in your face there oh yeah Mm -hmm. so did you enjoy it being on the ship yeah 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 i got into um scuba diving that's okay. A little bit outside of music, but <laughs> well, that was something that we did because we were going to great places for that. Right. So I got certified and all that, and we would go together and. Right. Yeah. And, and so you said you were playing all the you know Credence Clearwater Revival and all that genre. What's the first genre that you got you know hooked on when you started playing? Or, or do you just veer towards jazz if you're a saxophonist? Um. No, we were, were no, really we were doing yeah. like the horn band stuff because yeah. we had uh, three horns. So we were doing Chicago. Right. Okay. So when I got in Dana Paul's band and he's doing like Make Me Smile, it was like, oh, yeah, I played I this a this. few zillion times. Right. Um, uh, and, and then some of the soul music that was out that had horns in it back then. And then I, I would hear like jazz every now and then like on the radio or something and it just sounded very complicated. Right. You know, like bebop really fast and difficult and all that. And eventually uh, we did have what they called a stage band in the high school, um, which was like a big band. And um, I, I think uh, at, at that point I was into like some of the big bands like Maynard Ferguson. Mm-hmm. And I knew who Dave Brubeck was, you know, right. and Jerry Mulligan and people like that. And then I, I was taking private lessons at that point. And the guy I had was, he was great for sound and certain things. He was like a Vegas guy. He had, he'd done shows in Vegas, but he wasn't really an improv player. And then then the, the music store got a different guy. And I told him what I was into. And, and he said, your taste will change. Check this out. And he handed mm. me a stack of records. Oh. Good. And and I remember every record he gave me to this day. Really? He gave me Giant Steps by John Coltrane. Okay. He gave me a Sonny Stitt record called Tune Up, Fad Albert Rotunda by Herbie Hancock, sure. okay. Light as a Feather by yeah. Chick Corea, right? And I was so clueless that I thought Chick Corea was the female singer on, on oh, the recording. Oh, that's so I, chick. <laughs> and, and coming with a, with a pop and rock mentality, yeah. usually the singer's the star. So yeah. I thought Chick was a chick. Yeah. Right. And also there's another thing that I don't think the original pressing of that record had any of the credits. Oh, I don't wow. think it listed anybody. Wow. It might have listed I don't a remember. few people. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, how is So that profound, uh, he was right. My taste did change, but he kind of prodded me, and I'm still in touch with him to this oh, day. Nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, with that collection, you, at that point, you either <laughs> I got to give quit, back to him sometimes. You either quit or you, or you <laughs> take that, that road, which we're glad that you did. Yeah. No, I gave him back the records. And so who would you say that you ended up, of the sax players, who did you end up listening to the most? Who had the most profound Well, influence? when he gave me those records, I wore out the grooves on, on the, on the yeah. cut giant steps. Okay. I listened to that over and over. That was just like... I. I didn't know what the guy was doing, but it sounded great to me. Okay. Yeah. So you say Coltrane? Yeah, and, and, and that Light as a Feather, all those records, Sonny Stitt. I, I went through a lot of different phases, and I, I'm into almost everybody you can imagine. I right. think if you do that and you kind of um, are influenced by that many people, hopefully you're going to sound a little bit original just by having a exactly. lot of different influences rather than being obsessed with one, well, one it's, player. It's, it's how you end up processing the, the incoming information, and then as it's outgoing, it's like that's how you put your stamp on, on the, yeah. you know, the notes. Yep. Um, very cool. 
So you uh, did get to work with some uh, heavyweights in, in your career. Let's take a look at uh, this one here, uh, the, oh. Dorsey, the Dorsey Band, yes? Okay, so um, before I went on ships, I did a stint with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra, okay. and I'm there um, to the left of, uh, that was our guest uh, singer. That's not the whole orchestra, that's just right. part of them hanging backstage, and that's that's Cab Calloway yep. wow. right there, yeah. Heidi, Heidi. I'm Hi. sorry. Um, just to the... Um, well, as I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm to the left of Everyone, it. Everyone, probably, uh, he's on Callaway's right side. Yeah. So that Our was, uh, that's what they called a ghost band. I remember my cousin was all excited, and she said, did you get to meet Tommy Dorsey? And I was like, well, he died before I was born, <laughs> you know? Right. So there was the Miller band, and there was the Dorsey yeah. band, and, and, and um, all these bands, um, you know, I guess, you know, there was a market for him and somebody's making a buck off the name. And I actually, I think his widow was getting, the, had the rights to it and, and she got some money or something to be able to have the band on the road. Of course, the leader had to be a trombone player. And that was a guy, he was a pretty big name in his own right, named Buddy Morrow. He had the hit with Night Train way back. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I met the band. Uh, in Kansas City and I always mm. wanted to get out of Baltimore not that there's anything wrong with Baltimore but I had this like wanderlust I, I wanted to see the world right and ships also helped with with yeah. that too so in in the Dorsey band I got to see a lot of the country we crisscrossed the country so many times and literally I would wake up and uh, forget what town I was in <laughs> It'd be like am I in Kansas or <laughs> Chicago <laughs> That's right. funny. Um, so how long were you with them Oh, um, maybe uh, four months or so. And you did that much traveling in four months? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. They did a lot. They did, sometimes they would do a hit and run where they would do a, a concert, and they would, we would pile on the bus. Those are the ones. And we wouldn't get a um, <laughs> hotel till the next day. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, here's another, uh, another heavyweight. And I'm guessing his, his brother might have influenced you a little bit. Oh, yeah, that wasn't all that long ago. Um, that was a, a concert at Pinecrest Gardens okay. with course, the South Florida. The great Randy Brecker. Yeah, the South Florida um, Jazz Orchestra. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I kind of was in the hot seat because I, I had, uh, the, yeah, the Mike Brecker. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I, Everybody's that kept, that in the hot kept, seat when that, they play with Randy. That that kept me up at night. How am I, <laughs> how am I gonna measure up to Michael Brecker? You know, well, were you playing Brecker Brothers tunes? Oh yeah, Skunk okay. Funk and all the okay, all the hits. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It's really a kind of something when you're you manage to reach a level in music where you can play with people that you idolized basically, you know, in in your youth and and coming up. He was the nicest guy too. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. down to earth. Yeah. He, yeah. I, I had That's the pleasure. That's what we like. Well. That's what you know. Yeah. When when you meet you meet your heroes mm -hmm. and they're actually decent people. It's it's fantastic. Uh, I uh, we have some more pictures to show, but I if people out there have not already uh, purchased it, you did record a, an album. Uh, how is it like a three years ago now? 2016. 2016. Wow. Time, Time. flies. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> A great uh, Fuget. Re uh, recording, I guess, for lack of better word. I always want to say album. Shows shows my age, but I know uh, that's is that dated that term now. I, I say it anyway. An album. So. Yes. Yeah, so I still like the idea of albums. We yeah. we do too, and so this is if you don't already have it, pick it up. It's great music, uh, done with all mostly of the locals, and you have a few guests on it, right? I think Jonathan Kreisberg, who used to be. Here yes. he went to UM. We yeah. went to UM together. He's been in New York tearing it up up there. And yeah, we even have the great Nikki Ort on there. Look at, oh. that. <laughs> Look at that! But don't let that stop you from buying this <laughs> recording. Please exactly. go out there. Uh, here's a lovely photo from the CD release party, which would have been over at the open stage. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's Seth Merlin on trumpet. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. How, how's uh? Have you been doing any writing during COVID? Um. I, uh, I just finished uh, a big band version of South Beat, the title track. Oh, oh. nice. And uh, we're going to do it Friday um, with uh, um, Pete Francis's big band, oh, good. Uh, the okay. Big Sound Orchestra, Where? up at the Arts Garage. Oh, okay, oh, nice. nice. 
But my goal is to do the whole record or most of it. And, and just, just to have it as big band arrangements and then if I get the opportunity to, yeah, that's I don't know, great. guest or whatever, to have it. You know. yeah. That's a, a lot of work. How are you with the It's with the a lot of work. Do, the are you a band. fast writer? or No, I'm super slow. Got it. Oh, yeah, it takes me forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so you got one down. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. One down, We're nine almost to there. go. <laughs> nine? Well, if I do the whole record. Yeah. Wow. I that's... don't think I'll do the whole record as a big band chart, though. Right. What made you end up going to U of M? Oh, um, well, when I was coming out of high school, there was only a few places where you could major in jazz. Right. So um, UM, everybody knew about UM. UM and Berkeley mm -hmm. and North Texas right. had a great program. And I think Indiana was going on, but I didn't know about it then. So um, I went to uh, this school. It was called Towson State College then. Now it's Towson University. Okay. And we had a, a, they didn't have a jazz major till I think the year after I left, mm. but we had this guy, Hank Levy. He was kind of a well-known um, composer and arranger for big bands. He was the jazz guy there. And um, it was like a draw from like uh, Pennsylvania and New Jersey and Virginia and surrounding states and sometimes even further away. And uh, he, they, there was a lot of people there that wanted to play jazz. Mm. Um, you know, he, he had like an improv class and you could study. I didn't study arranging with him, but you could, but you couldn't be a jazz major. Right. Yeah. Well, you yourself uh, became an educator. Oh yeah. And you like teaching? Oh yeah, sure. I, I, it, it's part of me now. I mean, it's like I do gigs and I teach. It's, it's like, the, I feel like one complements the other. Have you, do you feel like you've learned more about your instrument through teaching? Oh yeah. I practice when I, if I have an advanced student and if I'm giving them stuff to practice, I make sure I review it. And right. Stuff that I right. dream up or that people tell me about or sometimes now I find stuff online to practice then I share that with my students. Right. I've studied clarinet and flute at <laughs> UM and yep. I take things that I, learn from flute teachers and I apply that to the saxophone like long tone exercises and technique stuff and yep. and it's some I music you you can all there's always something new to learn there's always something new to check out I think I'm as fanatical about music as I am now at this stage of my life as I ever was okay so I, I have no regrets being right. in music I think it's uh I feel blessed to yeah. be able to play music and for I a have, living here's I a have to say shot of you with uh Oh yeah, that's my sax quartet. That was the the best uh, sax ensemble, I guess quintet. Well, with me, it was a sextet. <laughs> my arrangements are expandable. Good. Like I'll write stuff if I have six that semester. Yeah, yeah. And um, the only reason I was playing soprano was I guess nobody else had a soprano. So I sometimes I would play with them, and sometimes you know I wouldn't play with them. But that particular group was the the best. Uh, do you recognize any of those faces, Wendy? Uh, it's hard for me to see That's exactly who it is. Oh, you, the guy on the far left, he, he played in uh, the forums and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he just yeah. He was good when, I, when he came to me, and then he just got better and better and better and better. And, and better. what kind of material were you doing with this group? Um, I write a lot of the arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, I did a Autumn in New York. I, I did a um, Stevie Wonder song. Um, Bop, 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 what's that one? Da, da, da. When the shark bite. No, that's no. what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, I'm drawing a blank right now. I did a, I did a arrangement for Nicole um, Henry, and then I, I liked the song so much I made a sax ensemble arrangement okay. out of it. Uh, nice. Uh, speaking of Nicole Henry, here's a beautiful shot. You guys at the art, Arts Garage. How'd you know? Uh, you know, oh, did I put a title on no, there, didn't no, I? No, no, we're just that good. <laughs> no, they had a really nice photographer yeah. there, and I just, uh, I really like that shot. Sometimes black and white just does it, you know? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. moody and, yeah. The color's not bad. Look at this. Look at this group. Look at the center of this photo. Oh, my oh. God. This was another Arts Garage performance, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yep, that's the band right there. Yeah. Shiv and Seth and Pete Wallace and me in the middle there. That was a fun gig. Uh, and w was that the year just before COVID? 
I think I th- it was. It wasn't all that long it ago. It was not um, long before that. It was, uh, I, think, I think it was a September, and there was this hurricane scare. And they um, mm. they were talking about postponing it. Right. But, but right. I didn't want to, like, uh, you know, you guys had already been contracted and everything. And, and I thought, let's, please, let's not, let's not cancel it. But then it, you know, kind of affected the turnout a little bit. But, I right. mean... As far as I'm concerned, we had a great night. I it thought. was everybody played really quite, great. Quite fun. Here, here's another great shot from the touring. Who are you touring with here? Was this vacation? Nicole? Nicole Henry. Oh, this was a Nicole. Okay. Great. Yeah. Wow, that's an that's an amazing. That photo. was. Uh, I want to say 2019. I think oh, it's like that behind you. I think it's 19. Yeah. Yeah. How long were you there? Um, most like six days or so. Oh, good. So you had. Yeah, a good we taste. had. We only had two performances, so we had a lot of time off. And, and uh, I loved Russia. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know what to expect. Right. It just felt like any other European city. You know, it was like right before Christmas. So it was snowing, wow. and it was snow on the ground. It was very cold. You know, it got yeah. dark like 4.45 in the right. afternoon. That, the night we went there, it got, you know, we went there like, that's a little bit after. That could have been 5.30 or something right, right wow. there. And it's dark already. Did you just do Moscow or did you do St. Pete as well? No, we just uh, had like this um, Christmas party for some company where they okay. had all kinds of different acts. They had a bunch of Russian like pop stars and stuff when we were just one of many. Right. And then at the end of the week, we did a, a, a little private birthday party for the wife of the owner of the company. Sweet oh, gig. cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So you still like to travel? Oh, I love it. Yeah. 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 yeah I always... That, that's my dream. That's combining my passions. Mm-hmm. Traveling and music. I mean, it's not always so glamorous. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times you go out to a place and then they fly you in that day and then you do the gig and you're flying back home the next right, morning. Right. So, you know, it kind of depends on the accommodations and where you're going of and course. all that. But, I, I mean, I just, yeah, yeah I still love it. Yeah. Japan is awesome. Yeah. Right. Been to Japan like four times. Oh, amazing. And that was all Nicole? Three with her and then Casey and the Sunshine Band back in 90. Wow. All right. That was for three weeks. You that was a nice trip. You neglected to tell us about that. That mm-hmm. seems like a... <laughs> My disco face? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I feel like he's been keeping some probably juicy pictures away from us. I know, exactly. <laughs> now, now we, uh, we usually like to ask this. So you've done a lot in music. Is there something that you haven't yet done that you would like to try and uh, Well, he's, he's working on his big band. We know the big band yeah. is happening. Yeah. Um, what would I like to do? Uh, there's places in the world I haven't been. Of course. <laughs> like? I want to do more recording. Okay. We're, or I haven't been to China. Okay. I, mean, I haven't been to... Uh, other than Japan, I haven't been anywhere else in Asia. Right. Have you done Australia or New Zealand? No, I haven't been there either. So musicians out there that need a saxophone player yeah, right. for any of those places, Tom's ready. He is yeah. ready. He's got his everything up to date. I got my passport date. up to date. That's right. There you go. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, so uh, I think we're going to probably, I think we have all the, the pictures out of the way. And uh, the guys are here. Yeah. Is there anything else that you, you wanted to know that... Uh, one, well, of, one of your juicy little... No, I don't have any juicy things, no. <laughs> You didn't do any background on them? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think that's good. Other than, other than the fact that... Uh, well, let me ask you this. How, how are the gigs going since things seem to be opening up a little bit now? Are you, are you working? Um, are the calls starting to come in? I got one last night, but um, I got back to her late, so... And I, I don't even know who it was. Somebody recommended me. Um, here and there, not not as much as I'd like them to be. Yeah. 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 You feel comfortable though. You're ready to go. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I got my horns fixed this week. Oh, I'm ready to go. Holy cow! And you sound yeah. great. I mean, honestly, you're really one of my favorite sax Thank guys you. here, just because it's yeah. so tasteful and. It, Did you ask him which he, which horn he, he favors? No, I didn't. Hey, <laughs> do you have a which, favorite? Do you consider yourself a tenor player? I mean, yeah. of, of the horns that you play? Yeah. Do you play Barry? I don't think I've ever seen I you I don't play own Barry. one on purpose. 
Oh, uh, right. <laughs> you don't want yeah, because if I owned one, people would call me for yes. berry cakes. And now yeah. I have to lug that monster like to the gig. Is it, is it really? My neck hurts me enough. That's okay. why I have this special strap. Yeah. Is that the reason, though? The, the Just the physicality of it? Playing yeah, wise, but, you enjoy it? Uh, sometimes I want to get one just because sometimes there will be a gig where you have to double on Barry or there might be a call for a recording and I'll be like, you know, call Mike Bernola. I don't right. do that. Yeah. I mean, I've tried it where I borrow one, but that yeah. you can't. I got to say, in those horn bands, Barry is just a fun instrument. When you hear oh, that, so it you got great. It. Yeah. 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 I played in eighth grade. I played Barry for a year. Wow. They put, they put me on Barry sax. Yeah. Oh. So, um, yeah, tenor and... I've had really good friends tell me that so soprano is my, my best instrument. Huh. Hmm. But to me, it's, I don't think I could do like, like Liebman where he just almost completely gave up tenor and even like Wayne Shorter almost. Right. right. And, and really concentrated on soprano. To hmm. me, it's like a flute player with, you know, the piccolo. The piccolo is great, but right. are you going to like put away your flute? It's always like a double right. for right. me, but I still love it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you said you teach a... I guess legit stuff in school that's for studies I know there's not a huge repertoire for saxophone in classical music have you ever explored that or played anything like that um most of the literature is written for alto okay yeah there are some tenor pieces and uh yeah I have taught it and I have um went through some of it and I actually I played with the Miami Symphony for a good while oh, okay mm-hmm yeah, Did you I was the, the saxophonist with the Miami Symphony, whatever that means. What it means is, <laughs> actually, <laughs> that you're not going to be there every concert. Right. And right. out of a given season, you might do one, one like little run, one little concert run. Okay. And then the most I th think I did in one season was maybe five different concert series, you know, where you, you rehearse pretty much the whole week. And then you go in, and then, and then you do maybe a Friday and Saturday, you know, maybe three concerts over the weekend. Right. But we did some fun stuff. I mean, I did a Ravel's Bolero that has okay. a soprano sure. and a tenor solo in it. And they were trying to save money, so they were like, can you play both of these? <laughs> it's like, well, you know, I'm not Joe Donato. You know? <laughs> <laughs> At the same time? <laughs> no, but what it is is you have, like, two bars of a very slow three to put down the tenor mm -hmm. and pick up the soprano and play the exact same solo on the... Right. It's oh, pretty wow. nerve-wracking. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then there were some Villa Lobos, the Brazilian composer. He mm -hmm. loved saxophone. Yeah. I played some, some of that stuff. And then they did, like, a movie program where I got to actually improvise and do like the Pink Panther and okay. uh, it was fun I I always uh, looked up to um, symphonic and classical musicians so maybe after the big band is done you can you can do the whole your whole album with uh, with the symphony full orchestra <laughs> yeah <laughs> do it well that would Come be on, cool Charlie. actually I would like to hook up with a singer do you need any charts for a I would love to write for for an orchestra Ooh. I do I'm sure I need charts for, for orchestra, you ever get a call like that? I have. So now I'm interviewing you. So. Yeah, no, I, I actually have. Actually, right before the pandemic, uh, we Jim and I were supposed to be featured um, on a concert of, of, of stuff. And I don't really have anything specifically for me, so it was going to have to be you know me looking for things that are, already exist. So... Uh, and and usually if you have them you can you can actually look for work because you you can say I have a book and things Doesn't, like that. Doesn't um Lee San maybe has done it. Lee San has yeah. books, Michelle Amato I know does stuff and mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, so if you're offering her answer was yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is your uh, website uh, still functional? Oh, okay. I thought, it, you're gonna say, I thought you were going to say, is it up to date? The answer to that well, is no. But nobody it, it, has touched their website. Last time I checked, it month. was still there. I, I, okay. I, I paid my annual thing. Sweet. So. so you will, when the gigs start coming in, I imagine. And can they order your CD? Is the information on the, of the CD on your website? Uh, no, but um, the CD is um, available through uh, CD Baby. Well, they don't uh, exist anymore. anymore. That it doesn't exist anymore? No. Well, then how, they, how am I going to get my royalties? <laughs> I think Amazon. <laughs> your your 10 cent check? I think Amazon. Right, exactly. I think maybe Amazon will still sell physical copies. Okay, and... so uh, all, the deal was it was supposed to go uh, on all on those all platforms. Yeah, right. and it probably still well, in Including Tom digital. McCormick. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I'm sure Amazon. And has you know, I I'm selling it out of my trunk if anybody's interested. Yeah, so you can well, always you contact go. Tom McCormick. <laughs> yes, you contact Tom McCormick. Go to TomMcCormickMusic.com. I know that once the gigs start rolling in, he's going to keep it current. 
aren't yeah. you? Yes. <laughs> Anyhow, man, it's it's such a pleasure to have you here and hearing you live, uh, finally again. And uh, thank you for bringing this great trio. And and I think you got another set for us, yeah. Thank you for having us. Oh yeah, you it's sound you guys sound great. All right, so we'll do a little bit of housekeeping while you get the, the you round up the guys, and uh, and we'll uh, and we'll. So I want to just mention again. Um, no, I already did that. Oh, what do you I, want I'm, to talk about? I, oh, I want to do that, but I already I already fixed All it, right. so you can add it. Okay. Um, so here we go. Yes, I wanted to make sure that we support our musicians. So if you are able um, to show them a little bit of love, use our vi virtual tip jar, and you just text the word tip jar to the number 44321. The first $100 will be matched, and we just always want to... Uh, our whole point in starting the show uh, when the pandemic first started was that we didn't want people to get out of the habit of live music um you know because we we had been present the uh, uh, miami jazz cooperative had been presenting every monday night at the open stage and uh we really liked the idea of keeping the habit going of of monday night music but also at the same time we wanted to we wanted all of our musicians to stay working you know in it whatever way we possibly could so this was the way that that we were able to do that so we want to make sure that everybody is paid and paid fairly and and other than you know pizza and stuff that we have here but uh so if you could support our musicians it's it's really appreciated all of the money goes directly to them so text the word tip jar to the number four four three two one the first one hundred dollars will be matched and we are would all be so very appreciated appreciative and appreciated yes we will mm -hmm. feel appreciated and we will be <laughs> appreciative um so thank you in advance um, are you guys ready to? Would you to like to play camera person real quick and oh, get the shot happening yes. again? Let me find. Let me do that. All right. Okay. Because I can't see nothing. You shall. Okay. We can see everybody. Yep. Yeah. Right. Nope. One, two, one, two, three, four. Thank <laughs> you. 
course, that was uh, John Coltrane's Naima, and that's uh, something that I recorded on that uh, 2016 CD uh, entitled South Beat. And uh, we're going to move on and do something called Sugar, a nice uh, bluesy thing by uh, Stanley Turrentine.
if if you are part of that, you get like a a swing or kind of kind of on the slope. Thank <laughs> you. 
something called Friday Night at the Cadillac Club. And that was written by Bob Berg, great saxophone player. All right.
right. That was Tom McCormick on the sax, Derek Fairholm on the organ, and Gertz Kudyak on the drums. Yeah, guys. So good. So good. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. It was just such a thrill. Uh, you know, it really is cool because, you know, we've got like three other people in the house with us and we just get this live, this amazing private concert in, it's an in our it was living just, room. Uh, we're being uh, self-indulgent here. Is that here. what it is? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's coming for us. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring treats and uh, <laughs> exactly. bring the music. Watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best, honestly. We'll play for watermelon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so once again, you have... Uh, you have joined us for a Monday yeah. night and, and hopefully you've enjoyed the music and the, and the information and talks and stuff. Um, want to let you know who our partners are in this grand adventure of jazz and conversation. Uh, we are partnered up with uh, Sunshine Jazz Organization and you can find their website at sunshinejazz.org. Do we, are we playing? Yes, I think they have one thing uh, going. Yeah, we've so got the, sun, the Sunday brunch, correct? Yes, we do. So let's hear all about that. Sunshine Jazz Organization is proud to be presenting world-renowned steel pan maestro Othello Molino at weekly Sunday Jazz Brunch from noon to 3 p.m. at KC Healthy Cooking, located on a spacious outdoor patio at 1900 Biscayne Boulevard, serving an excellent gourmet Caribbean menu and great jazz, led by Lloyd Hawkins and Ted McDermott. As Alice Day would say, hope to see your face in the place. Yeah, so that is what's going on with the Sunshine Jazz Organization. And our good friends at the Gold Coast Jazz Society um, is going to start their season coming up in October, I believe. That's right. And they're going to do a regular full season. So we hope you definitely come out and see um, live music. And of course, the Miami Jazz Cooperative. And we are just about, we are in the planning stages of, of getting back to normalcy. Um, we're going to, so we've been doing this since, you know, since, you know, just a couple weeks into the pandemic. It's been over a year and uh, really enjoyed, uh, you know, doing this. We are starting to think about winding down. We've yes, got um, the, the, the plan is uh, we are, we have two more. Uh, in July. In July, and let's talk about those. Okay. First, shall we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next week we are doing a big tribute slash party and celebration of Matt Benelli, who is retiring from Miami Miami Dade College after many moons. Yep. And uh, so, if any any of you out there who are listening or will listen later have pictures or stories and anecdotes. Or you and just want to tell a video. Uh, you just want to tell. You want to tell Matt just you know what he's meant to you, or or you have a great story. You can videotape something and and you can send it. Yeah, let me uh, put that up real quick. You have it. Uh, I will. In, in about oh, a second. look at that. So we're so we're just kind of collecting uh, pictures and stories and videos. So if you have anything or you have a cool performance that you have, send it to Nikki Orta at Guy at yahoo.com. You couldn't have picked an easier um, email name. <laughs> That's D E L I A N G U Y, Delian Guy at yahoo.com. Um, because we're just hoping to have, you know, bombard. We want to bombard Benelli with, <laughs> well, uh, with love and, uh, I don't know, silliness, which is just going to be a good time. We're really excited about that. And then our last uh, Monday in July will be another live concert. Um, although Matt will have will feature some live music, yes, it will. You know, They'll playing. be alive for treat. But uh, uh, Leonard will be uh, doing Leonard Rutledge will be doing a concert um, and, and an I, interview. Yes. And I know he, he'll have uh, Felix Gomez on piano. Okay. Uh, Abner Torres on drums, and I'll be playing bass on Great. that. Great. All right. Because I'm not haven't spread myself thin I, enough. I can't wait to see how that works. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be the end of this month, and then we plan to kind of scale back things in August. I think we're going to do two shows in August. Yeah. And then we will see, and while we're working on getting things back to, back to live. Yep. I know so many people have enjoyed, especially the, the interview portion and, you know, seeing pictures and, and learning about where people are from and how they got to this point of their career. So we are going to definitely try to figure out a way to incorporate that in our live shows and maybe also do some live streaming mm -hmm. of our, of, of our, um, 
live shows. So, um, you know, we will keep you appra apprised yeah. of, of what's exactly going to happen. But uh, we hope to see you next week. And like I said, if you have anything uh, that you want to share about Matt, Matt Benelli, please send it to delianguy at yahoo.com. Um, other than that, we it's, hope you stay safe and yeah. happy and healthy. And uh, we will see you next week. See ya. Good night. Good night.